What's up? <laughs> Welcome. Hello, everyone. That intro. Hey, everybody. Uh, God. It, we're here. We're here, man. <laughs> it is Saturday, April 17th, and you know what that means. It's time for some in, uh, dramatic reading. Let's go around and introduce ourselves. <laughs> Hey, I'm Amy Lynn. I'm, what? what? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ty. <laughs> no, I was writing down Amy Lynn's name. Hello, I'm Kai Tam. <laughs> I'm Deja. I'm Nick. I'm oh Oscar. I'm Delvin. I'm Sophie. I'm Xavier. And together we are the, the intoxicated leaders. And guess the the illustrious and Oscar and the glorious Delvin are with us. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And guys, it is a wonderful, special, fantastic, amazing super stream tonight because one year ago to the day and almost to the hour was our first ever intoxicated reader stream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? One year ago today, I was having a panic attack reading Tipsy Tempest. <laughs> no, I was just high as hell. Um, <laughs> as are as were half of us, or drinking the other half. But guys, look how far we've come. <laughs> kind of nutty. Yeah. Look at that. Wait, Nick, show him the shirt. Oh, and guys, we have merch as of like two weeks ago, or a week ago, I don't know. But here's one of the shirts that you can buy. For my gaming mm -hmm. stream, if you know, you know. Mm -hmm. This is one of the legendary drawings that I don't remember who did it uh, from. It's Kai. The wonderful Kai Tam. Uh, from back in November. Oh, and shit. we yeah. joked about making real t-shirts out of it and I needed to figure out how to make t-shirts, so this was the tester. And you can buy it for like 16 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also buy our Intoxicated Bunch shirt, which I freaking love the design of. I love how it turned out. And that features the artwork of Nicholas Kala, uh, which I'll just drop his you know, Instagram in the chat real quick. But yeah. <laughs> We have a super, one sec, I can't type at the same time as talking. Fair enough. We have an awesome prompt tonight to kind of celebrate one year and everything that we've done over the past year and make fun of ourselves just a little bit in our writing, because uh, our prompt this week is intoxicated fanfic. We did fanfiction of ourselves or whatever Whatever we did. Um, we'll see in just a little bit. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm pumped. Uh, I how, Did you guys have a lot of fun writing this, X and Kai? I know you guys got scripts for it. It was I struggles. Mean, it was struggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the str I, finished, I literally started and finished this today. Nice. That's impressive yeah. considering how long it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holy shit. I got stuck on one part and I'm just like, you know what? I'll come back to it when I want. And then it got to Saturday. And I'm just like, so yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's pumped. I'm pumped, dude. Fuck yeah. So, drinking games for the night. Just, you know, drink whenever you feel jolly that we've been here for one year. Uh, no, there are three drinking rules, the third which we did not talk about before the stream because we are just a, a jumbled mess because we're trying out new times as you can see it being 5 p.m a first rule sorry i'm keeping on track first rule drink anytime we mess up a line or break character the second rule anytime the lord of the drinks which for the knights who's drinking anytime Kai, you've been it for Deja. Anytime Deja raises her drink, you can take a drink, audience. And our third rule, which is unique to tonight. Sophie, take it away. 
anytime someone gets called out in a fan fiction format for something they do. Mm. Okay. Okay. Who is it? Um, kind of play on what you do. What? <laughs> Mine's uh, just gonna be endless in a way. But I like it. Mine doesn't really have any. I need it. As people know, mine's just a continuation of a continuation of a continuation. Right. We'll get there. We'll get there. Well, let's take that rule, and any time that you feel it even implies such, take a drink if you're drinking. Remember, we encourage, just as we did the first night we started streaming, we encourage safe drinking, knowing your limits, staying within it, and having a good time for a long time. All right. So without further ado, I think we're all ready to start. Heck yeah. All righty. First script of the night is going to be mine, and I am pumped. This is called My Intoxicated Academia. <laughs> yes. Let me give you the cast real quick. Oh God. Cast is everyone as themselves, except for the people who aren't here. I'm about to cast them. Okay. Sophie, you're taking stage directions. I will be the narrator. Kai, you're going to be Aizawa. Delvin, you're going to be Sarah and Christian. That's it. Deja, you're also going to take Natalie's parts. And Oscar, you're going to be Amy Lynn. Okay. I'm going to give her the stupid. <laughs> Just pretend to be an AI robot. <laughs> right. Alrighty. If everybody's ready, let's fucking do Wait, okay. it. So the narrator is a role, so I'm just reading the stage directions. Yeah, the okay. char the narrator's written as a character. Okay, okay. Interior, apartment, night. The intoxicated readers are drinking, chatting, and enjoying the night. Soft music plays from a JBL speaker. Amy Lynn, Deja, Kai, and Sophie sit by the window, smoking a joint that Amy Lynn is extra proud of rolling. Nick, Sarah, Natalie, Christian, and Xavier sit around the room, drinking and talking about their recent show. And yeah, Impact Episode 43 is going to be something else. Just you wait. Just you wait! <laughs> That's really awesome. Can't wait to read it. Just then, the lights shut off. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> is everyone okay? Yeah, it must be a power outage. Wait, weird. Working. Okay. Yeah, mine either. Weird, I was just charging mine and it's not working either. This is weird, it's pitch black in here. Yeah, I can't see anything. No one responds. Uh, hello? Anyone? No one responds. I'm getting... Kind of tired. Cut to interior, classroom, day. The aforementioned crew all sit at desks, faces down on the wood. One by one, they all shoot up like they have just been jolted awake from a dream. A man, Aizawa, stands at the front of the class. Deja is the first to speak. The fuck? This is... Where are we? No way. You are? My head hurts. How'd we get here? Everyone quiet. Class is in session. Anyone else? Uh, anyone confused? We're in my Boku no Hero Academia. My Hero Academia? The anime. God help us. I said quiet down. I get you're from the United States, but you should all show manners while you're here. Why the principal thought an exchange class for 1A was a good idea now, I'll never understand. Might as well try to make it worth something. Boom. An explosion tears through the side of the classroom. The intoxicated readers are blown black, blown back, and Aizawa immediately throws down his glasses and takes a combat stance. Attention, students. Please evacuate. I repeat, please evacuate. This is not a drill. A league? How do you know about that? We've got our own intel. Guys, if we're here, we probably have quirks, right? Oh. What do you mean, quirks? No, they're like superpowers, babe. In the anime, all the students have quirks. Uh, oh, fuck yeah, I wonder what my quirk is. Sophia Asagawa, birthday, November 23rd. Quirk, 
Car trouble. She can make any vehicle she can think of appear out of thin air, but they always have minor damages to them. <laughs> oh, come on! Yo, that's awesome! What's mine? Sarah Korov. Birthday, May 8th. Quirk, disappear. She has the ability to make anything or anyone disappear from an existence, only to be willed back into existence at a later time. Yo, that's kind of cool. How do I use... Disappears. You kids follow the evacuation plan. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out there. We can help. We know about the power of no moves. Holy shit, holy <laughs> shit, this is... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit, holy <laughs> shit, this is awesome! I've got the nerdiest heart on right now. Ew. Alright, look, follow my lead and just... A streak of black flies through the open wall and knocks Aizawa through the opposite side of the classroom. Standing in front of the class, a massive humanoid creature with the bird of a beak where Aizawa was. It stands over eight feet tall, has rippling muscles through its body, and lets out a scream like a thousand crows cawing at once. Readers, scatter! Like it was rehearsed, the readers all charge through the openings. In the walls, the scat in the walls and scatter into different teams of three. Xavier, Sophie, and Natalie find themselves in the hallway outside the classroom, face to face with the Nomu they had just seen. Sophie, can you distract them? Uh, I guess a tank? The air in front of Sophie shimmers and vortexes outward, creating an army tank just small enough to fit into the hallway. Unfortunately, the right treads are broken. The tank's gun aims directly at the Nomu. Fire it! Fire! Cut to exterior courtyard outside the school, day. Nick, Christian, and Amy Lynn find themselves in the courtyard outside the classroom, face to face with another Nomu. This one is taller, more slender, and has wings spread out from his back. Its foot-long talons glint sunlight at, as they aim towards the readers. The Nomu lets out a blood-curdling squawk and fire erupts from its beak directly towards the trio. Uh, somebody use a quirk. I don't know what mine is. Christian steps in front and raises his hands naturally. Christian Alexander Morgan. Birthday, October 13th. Quirk, mute. He has the ability to silence other quirks at the cost of his energy. He nearly always has to go to bed right after a showing of his power. Mute! <laughs> the, Nomu's first, the Nomu's fire freezes in midair and flumes up into smoke, then nothing. The Nomu squawks loudly. How do you know what to do? I don't know. I just felt it. Amy Lynn steps forward this time. Just feel it, huh? She breathes in, then out. Amy Lynn Perea, birthday, September 23rd. Quirk, ambassador. Amy Lynn manifests powers by a powers of a brand she is currently repping. The more she reps, the stronger her powers. Of course. Ambassador, uh, a golden state. Amy Lynn's clothes transform into a gray and green mid of cloth and smoke, whispering up around her in tendrils. Her eyes become cloudy and gray. Yo! Yo! Oh. Uh, poof! Amy Lynn raises her, hand, raises her hands and hot smoke erupts from her palms, much hotter than the Nomu's fire. It melts the Nomu down to bone. Then to Ash. No! Yeah. No! <laughs> Cut to exterior, roof of the school, day. Kai and Deja somehow made it to the roof. Anyway, a group of Nomu appear and surround them. Each is smaller than the one before, but all look quite deadly. Each one hosting their own quirks. Jagged teeth and blades for arms, electricity emanating from their bodies, acid dripping from their mouths. Babe. Babe, you better figure out what your quirk is real quick. Uh, uh, what's my quirk? Kai Tam. Birthday, December 9th. Quirk. Bottoms up. Kai has a stockpile of bourbon he can call upon at any time. The more he drinks, the more his physical abilities grow. His drunkenness can be passed on to those he attacks, allowing him to drink more. Let's go! Jim Bean! A, a bottle of Jim Bean honey appears in his hand. He begins drinking. Oh no. Let's go, you motherfuckers! 
Kai charges at the Nomus, <clears throat> throwing punches that send the creatures flying in all directions. Some of the others approached Asia. My Maple be <laughs> begins to yap. Deja looks down to see the chihuahua that has appeared from thin air. Maple? <laughs> How'd you get here? Anomu closes in on the two. Maple. Birthday. Unknown. Quirk. Challenger. Maple grows exponentially in size and strength to the opponent she challenges. Maple begins to grow larger and larger until she stands two feet taller than Deja, and at least three times that from the Nomu. Maple's yap has become more of a yomp, and her snarling is much more terrifying. Maple charges the Nomus, the Nomus, approaching and begins tearing them apart like chew toys. You could do that all along, and we have to mix your food for you. <laughs> Deja Johnson, birthday, April 15th. Quirk, shadow. Deja can manipulate shade and manifest it into physical forms. She can even manipulate her own physical being into shadows. Deja, spread, Deja spreads out her hands. Each shadow of the Nomus on the roof begin to dance, then slowly climb up their owners and wrap themselves around their owners' necks, strangling them with darkness. Shadow. Cut two. Exterior, courtyard, outside the school, day. Another explosion shakes the school. Nick, Christian, and Amy Lynn turn to see Xavier, Natalie, and Sophie running out from the wreckage. The first Nomu tears apart Sophie's tank behind them then slowly begins to approach. That one seems a bit stronger than the rest. Yeah, and it's fast. It's on a whole nother level. You guys tried out your quirks yet? Yeah. Nope. Not yet. Sounds like we're up then. Nick takes a step forward towards the large Nobu. Then he pauses and hinges over forward like he's in pain. Yo, are you okay? Nick. What's up? Nick stands back up and lets loose a massive burp into the sky. The air ripples around his mouth, creating a vortex of air that pulls the others closer to him a few feet. Nicholas Hellier, birthday December 13th. Quirk, belch. Nick has some seriously powerful burps. Nick laughs as if he hadn't been <laughs> doubling, <laughs> doubling over in pain the moment before. Wow, that was a big one. You guys think that was a 10? The rest of the group look at him, mouths ajar, and hair blown all in different directions. <laughs> Maybe aim the next one at the thing trying to kill us? <laughs> the Nomu approaches closer, only 30 yards away. Nick puts his hand on his stomach, doubles over, then aims forward with a massive belch. The Nomu is blasted backwards into the building, leaving a pile of dust and stone. Deja, Kai, and Maple all fight to stay standing on the shaking building. Hey, watch it! We're fighting up here! My B! The Nomu tosses rubble off of itself. I think you just pissed it off. Wait, wait. I got even bigger ones than me. I just gotta find a vending machine real quick. As she says the word time, a bass guitar appears in the air floating in front of her. Natalie Hilton, birthday, March 6th. Quirk, rhythm. Natalie's ethereal bass guitar can control or distort time around her or her opponents. It requires deep concentration, however, and the rhythm can easily be thrown off if she is in peril. Oh, cool. <laughs> Natalie begins strumming some power chords at a steady rhythm in the direction of the Nomu. As she slows down the BPM, the Nomu begins to become slower as if it's walking through glue or in slow motion. Yo. That's crazy. That's so man. All right, Nat, keep it up at that speed and we can take it down. On it. Nick, can you hit it from above with your burps? Keep it occupied so I can get close. How do I get above it? I got that one covered. Helicopter. A helicopter appears next to Sophie. She hops in the pilot seat and immediately starts it up. Unfortunately, its tail propeller sputters in short bursts rather than spinning. <laughs> something that should be too much of a that should be too much of an issue. Sick. Can you make a mecha zord? A what? Guys, we don't have the time. <laughs> the Nomu has picked up speed, adjusting to Natalie's time distortion with its immense strength. Sophie and Nick fly away to hover over. It's getting faster. It's okay. We just need. 
Nick starts burping down. <laughs> <laughs> Nick starts burping downwards at it. The helicopter jolts up with each belch, and a crater around the Nomu appears deeper and deeper. Anytime you need us, we can help. No, I got this one. Xavier reaches his hand forward. Xavier Pace, birthday January 7th. Quirk, impact. Impact allows Xavier to use relics from other realities. The more powerful the relic, however, the more Xavier loses his life force to other realities. Eventually, he will be pulled away entirely, and will have to find his own way back. Dion, the Sword of Eight Trigrams. A katana of pure green light appears in front of Xavier. As his hand grasps the hilt, the light dims to reveal a blade made entirely of a jade. A rich green aura emanates from it. The Nomu has regained his balance, blocking Nick's burps with its arms braced above it, and it continues its march towards the group. You're in my reach. At the speed of Xavier's steps and the slash of the Nomu's dark blood leaves a trail of Viridian from the crater to Xavier, who, in mere milliseconds, has himself 30 yards behind the Nomu. The creature's side has been cut through cleanly, nearly entirely in half. Dark blood gushes from the beast as it falls forward, limp. I'm Xavier. I'm gonna have to get on your bad side. You can never be on anybody's bad side, babe. <laughs> Maple japs at her. Kai and Deja approach. She has returned to her chihuahua's side. All right, Kai is drunk. I'm gonna take him. Deja wants to say home, but the word is lost in her mouth. Nick and Sophie jump off the helicopter as it dis dissipates into air. The whole group look around, unsure of how they got here, or what to do next. We're all more capable than I thought. Aizawa approaches from the wreckage of the classroom. And you didn't help at all. You seem to have had it handled. You seem to have had it handled. You know, I've got a student in 1A you could be good friends with. We're more interested in getting home. Home? To the United States? More like our own world. Your own world. Yeah, I mean, quirks are cool and all, but we're not supposed to be here. Do you know how to get us back? No, I don't. But he does. Aizawa points at Xavier. Everyone looks at him. What do you mean? Xavier looks to where Aizawa was standing, but he is gone. What did he mean, X? Xavier turns to Nick, but Nick is gone as well. The wreckage, of the, the wreckage of the school has disappeared. We get home, Xavier. As Xavier turns to face the voices, he sees that more and more of the scene around him is fading. We not trying hard enough? Xavier turns around and the field below him has disappeared. His feet are floating in a black void below him. How long will it take? Xavier looks up and finds the sky has turned pitch black. He floats in the darkness alone. Xavier closes his eyes. When he opens them, he's kneeling in front of a pod nestled in the roots of a massive tree. In the pod, we see a sleeping Sarah. It is as I told you. She had disappeared before I had even realized. Before I realized, I was lost in her dream. Everyone must awake at their own pace. You're lucky to have made it out. We need her if we want to stand the chance. In due time. Come. We must see off Zealous' team. Lane turns to leave. Xavier stands up, looking down at Sarah's pod somberly. He turns to follow Lane. Finished. End of impact. A dream journey. The first non-canon impact untold tale. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's crazy. Oh my god. How do you feel about yes, that? Yes, fan fiction. Hey, that was, that was good. I was like, if I need a filler, it's going right in there. If I ever make the anime, like, it's going right in there. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. That's good. That's cool. And then, like, all the quirks make sense. Like, if um, if My Hero Academia wasn't, like, PG-13, those quirks would definitely <laughs> be in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah, I love it was... that maple was really tall. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it was so much fun to write just like thinking of everybody's quirks and how like they could relate them to the world it was a hoot yeah man it's I crazy could summon helicopters what the fuck yeah because you always have card problems that's what no, i was I... getting at uh, yeah really <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't clear what are our quirks nick <laughs> yeah uh... <laughs> <laughs> Up next. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you next week. <laughs> it's a team court. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's me, right? Yeah. Woo. Okay. This is Impact Episode 15. Uh, we have our main characters. Uh, our recurring ones, you know, the intoxicated readers, we have Sophie, Nick, Kai, Deja, and new characters. We have, well, usually be a Sophie's character, but I'm taking that on today. Patillion is Oscar. Ringo is Delvin. Curly is Sophie. And narrator is Nick. And Curly and Ringo and narrator at the point. Nick, you already talked to you, so yep. we're good. Okay. I'll be starting off. Exterior. Loom Cafe. Present day. The Loom Cafe is the on the other side of the street from the Loom Hotel. It is made out of brick with a big wooden window showing the chefs make these wonderful creations. It is filled with candies and desserts native to Loom. On the outside are tables and chairs where Sophie and Nick sit. I would say this is the first time we actually got to rest. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I would say this is the first time we actually got to rest. Yeah, it's been pretty tense the past couple of days. Or should I say months? <laughs> yeah, months. Since we spent time in a tree that sent us to other realities. They both share a laugh. Nick and Sophie share a table of desserts. <laughs> mm. Nick dips his spoon into what looks like blue ice cream. Mmm, that was good. It was like... Sorbet. Ew, <laughs> no. Sherbert. Sorbet sounds more dignified. Whatever. I wonder how Deja and Kai are doing. Pet 2. Exterior. Woods. Night. We see Bia, Kai, and Deja walking through the woods, climbing steep terrain. Hey Bia, you think we can stop and rest? We've been walking for hours since we left the barracks. No. We continue forward. Deja whispering to Kai. They probably have us walking until next morning. They reach the top of the steep terrain, and it overlooks a vast forest. Behind them, you can see the city of Loom as it celebrates the festival of partings last night. <sighs> I bet we're missing out on great food. And hopefully the next town over has food. Um, what was it called again? Rem. Bia is pointing at a map on the ground. It is here on this side. We will traverse the forest and pass through a desert to reach Rem, the city of the coast. So we're headed southwest through a forest, maybe even a jungle to go through a desert? Correct. Okay, how many days to reach Rem? Hopefully two. You won't get much sleep. Let's go. Bia jumps down the cliff, sliding into the forest below. I think she's going to kill us. Traveling with no sleep? It's not possible. We'll make it work. Somehow. Deja jumps down as well. Kai holds back a moment and thinks about his options. He shakes his head and jumps off the cliff. Cut to Exterior Loom Cafe, present day. Nick and Sophie are now walking around the city of Loom, talking to the Anun and playing with the kids. I wonder what they did last night. Well, if it's anything like what we experienced last night, I hope they're okay. Cut to exterior woods later that night. We see Deja running in the forest. Something big is chasing her. I can't. You have to. Baby, stop running. That thing is not real. You have boars where you come from. I've seen them. Not that big. A tree falls right behind Deja. Deja barely dodges the falling tree. A 10-foot boar comes chasing behind her. You're wasting time. That's our dinner for tonight. The quicker the kill, the quicker you get to rest. 
Kai, using his superhuman strength, bounces from tree to tree until he is above the board. Deja! Deja waves her hands in the air. A blazing red sigil appears. Of the flame. A ball of fire blasts from the sigil toward Kai's direction. Kai absorbs the power with his left hand. A ball of fire erupts from his right. He then smashes it into the boar. I got it. Deja walks back to Kai as Bia is cutting the boar up. Deja looks back at Kai. Baby, it's gone. Kai's right hand from the wrist down is gone. I guess it was too much power. Give it a second. Kai's hand regenerates right before Deja's eyes. The bone is first, then blood vessels. As the blood vessels reach the end of the bone, the tendons begin to form. The muscle begins to overlap all of that. The skin is the last to form. This happens in a matter of seconds. Please be more careful. Second, don't do that again in front of me. Please. <laughs> Bia turns around with meat on a stick. That's the power you gained from a different reality. Yeah, yes. I, I was called Galap then. Don't rely on that. It can be a crutch, and you will, it will get you killed. You need to master that technique of yours. I feel like that's as far as it can go. You need to dig deeper. That's all I'm saying. The rest is up to you. Eat. Don't they all sit. They all sit, be by the toasted boar and eat their fill. One of the only moments with Bia that is relaxed. They all begin to pack the rest of the food into their sacks, but Bia waves them to stop. Be still. Listen. They are all quiet and don't move. There's this rustling in the distance. A monstrous howl is heard. Protect yourselves. Run and try to find a clearing. Go! The heart's in metal. We cannot falter. Sigils of protection appear in front of the three. Deja and Kai run off into the forest. Snarls and footsteps are heard chasing after them. Slow thuds are coming towards Bia. She looks off into the forest and sees eyes staring back at her. Don't be afraid, mutt. Come at me. Cut to exterior woods later that night. Deja and Kai are running in the woods. Deja trips on a branch just in time as a being passes over her. Kai lends her a hand and picks her up. Come on, we're almost there. I can see the light of the moon. There's an opening just ahead of them. They make it to the plains just out of the forest. We made it. There's a shot over Deja's shoulder, hitting a five-foot-tall wolf. What's that? I don't know. Let's do it. They both get into a similar stance, and sigils appear before them. Circle, Circle of, of protection. protection! A wolf charges in and is reflected back into the woods a few feet away. A pack of wolves circles them. We are gonna have to fight. I know. Deja puts her hands to the ground. A blast of energy pushes the wolves back. Kai runs out of the circle attacking wolves. Inside the circle, Deja prepares. I can hold out on my own, I think. A wolf jumps at Kai. Kai kicks it to the side. Another jumps from behind. A shot is heard. The wolf behind him fell into the ground. Deja steps out of the protection circle. Power erupts from her feet. Calling Spirit of the Woods. An eight wolf, an eight foot white wolf with green highlights appears. Deja rushes in with the wolf, taking out several of the other wolves that were chasing them. They just keep coming. This time, a shot is heard, and Kai is able to hear the reload, like the noise is getting closer. Deja jumps right next to Kai, and her wolf smash, smashes a few smaller wolves away. Yeah, yeah, of course. I just need to. Kai puts his hands up and touches Deja's wolf. The energy rushes into Kai. Wait on using that. He's coming. A black wolf with red highlights comes crashing through the woods. Bia clasps in its teeth. Clasps it in its teeth. It is eight feet tall, but broader, more of a beast. A stark contrast to Deja's white wolf. The girl fires two quick shots at the wolf, both shots hitting it in its eyes. It reels in pain and throws Bia into the air as she slides back near Kai. I see you two made it. Going on right now. That's the spirit of the forest. Deja looks at the girl as she steps forward. Deja and the girl look at the wolf spirit she summoned. Then what is this? 
its mother that passed years ago. How do we stop it? I don't know. We kill it. That's it. There has to be another way. The wolf recovers and attacks. Kai blocks his claws, but is thrown back into the woods. The girl fires six rounds at her hip. The shots trip up the wolf. The white wolf attacks the black. They both roll back into the woods. The group circles up again. Can you guys cover me? I think I have a plan. Sure. I'm the fastest gun in Agartha. Kai then unleashes the power he took from the white wolf. Kai's skin turns luminescent white with green markings all over his body. His hands have formed claws. Wait, do you hear that? Everyone is quiet as they are surrounded by smaller wolves once again. They begin fighting the wolves, Kai swiftly moving around them. He stops on the other side of the group of wolves. Fang of the wind! A cyclone erupts from the ground and cuts down many of the smaller wolves. The wolves disappear into smoke. Bia is punching wolves down. She jumps in the air. Her red hair begins to glow. She comes back to the ground quickly, creating a crater. Red Graviton. The girl with a cowboy hat and curly hair pulls out three different pistols. She tosses the pistols in the air and simultaneously fires them off all at once. Thousand bullets style. She sends so many bullets, it looks like a swarm. The hits, they hit the rest of the wolves and they vanish. Then the black wolf throws the white wolf back into the clearing. Kai runs behind the girl. The girl fires off around. It blinds the wolf. Kai jumps up. Bia! Graviton. Fang of the wind! Kai makes a cyclone erupt around the wolf as Bia uses Graviton to keep it in place. Thou shalt be cleansed of what ye harbors. One shall be balanced. Deja's eyes turn white. Deja points at the black wolf. The white wolf jumps over Deja. It, it bites the black wolf on the neck. The white wolf is absorbed into the black wolf. Deja's eyes return to normal. The black wolf collapses. Oh, it is over. What did you do? I cleansed the excess dark energy from it. Everything needs balance. Too much of one thing is bad. It must be Kefka's influence. Right. Then we are on the right path. Let us continue. What? Bia, we just finished a battle. We need rest. Remember, I said no sleep. We're pushing your limits. I'd like to introduce myself. I am Curly. Curly Abrocius. I have a wagon you guys can ride into the next town. I appreciate, but no. Well, the next town is 100 miles that way. Bia, we all need rest. It will be quicker if we take the wagon. Our end goal is to reach Rem. Bia is reluctant, but she gives in. They all walk to the wagon. But no sleeping, or I will make you walk. That is Can't crazy. Even. Do I hear complaining? No, no thank, thank you, you for, for the ride. ride. Curly grasps the reins of her horse. Everyone ready? Let's go. Cut to exterior city outskirts, present day. Everyone is riding on the wagon. Bia is asleep on some hay. While Kai and Deja are sleep deprived, they are riding on a they are riding on a dusty road. On the side of the road, you can see herders moving cows to another plot of land. We almost at Middletown. Curly, I have seen the moon sleep and the sun awake. D, just think about what the others are eating. Oh, like that candy shop or what? Or was it pastries? I think both. I can see it now. Sophie and Nick eating sweets and enjoying the town. I hate them. What if we drop Bia off and go to the town and get some... Don't even try it. Uh, we thought you were asleep. <laughs> I was meditating. A master leads by example. The horse stops at a trough and drinks water. <laughs> Welcome to Middletown. It is an old western town. It uses little magic. It is almost run down. There's the mayor's home, on the other side is the saloon, and a more promiscuous building attached to the saloon. This is a hardened place, where everyone either carries a pistol or are good with their fists. 
Let's get you a drink, shall we? Cut to the interior of the saloon day. As they enter the saloon, many of the patrons look at Bia, Kai, and Deja. One patron spits on the floor and snarls at them. Is it how we are dressed? I don't think it's that. We are dirtier than them. They are checking on what to see if they can scheme off you. Curly goes up to the counter. Give me three periwinkle ales and one vorka. A man with a bald head and a handlebar mustache comes out. Oh, Curly, I thought I had real customers. Come on, Patty, you know I'm good for it. Let us see, then. The entire saloon laughs. Curly pulls out a bag. Uh, Here. That residual power? Indeed it is. I can give you a little now, or I can take it to the general goods and get the money. I'll get your drinks. We'll need a room for my friends. Right on it. Curly turns in her seat. She looks at everyone in the saloon. They are all quiet. There are horses heard in the distance, rushing in quickly. Patillion comes back. Here your drinks. No room. You'll drink up and leave quickly. Patillion, what's the rush? Marauders are coming. And what you have in that bag, they would raise hell for it. There's no way they could stop me. They have a practitioner. Everyone in the saloon gets up and leaves. They go to their tents and houses. Deja lays down her head at the bar. Deja, get up! Where are we going? To look around. Be careful and focus. Kai is trying to reach the cup of ale, but is missing it by an inch. Deja slides him the drink. They both sip on their ale. Horses come to a stop outside of the saloon. Curly puts away her bag. You hungry, boys? A man kicks open the swing doors of the saloon. He is dressed in all black, from his gallon hat to the spurs on his boots. Where everybody at? Where, where the whore? You scared them off, sir. The man walks in further and sits down at a table. He lights a cigarette. I don't think I know your name, miss. It is tense in the saloon. Hey, barkeep, I need like two more of these. <laughs> Kai and Deja are wiping their faces. There's a little foam on Deja's lip from the ale. Baby, you got a little something. Uh, I'll get it. Well, ain't this an auspicious encounter? Well, my name is Ringo, and outside are my 20 men. Patillion comes back with drinks. He tries to sneak away. Whoa now, Patty. Don't sneak away. See, this place is usually booming when I come to town. Ain't that right, Patty? That's right, Ringo. So, since none of them are here, they must be scared of, of some re repercussions I might take to get what I want. So, none of you got something I want. Now, so, oh, so one of you got something I want. Now, tell what it is, and you might live. Well, you see, Ooh, damn, this drink is good. <clears throat> but I'm to the conclusion you're an asshole, so. Is that all you got to say? Save me the damn hero speech. Kai gets up from his seat and falls to the floor. Ringo bursts with laughter. Someone can't hold that liquor. Oh, wait, that's ale. Deja carefully gets up and helps Kai. You're exhausted. Why try to fight now? Ringo then gets up and points a pistol at Kai. Now somebody better tell me what you got. It's me. I have power residuals in my bag. Ringo goes up and snatches the bag. Ringo fingers through this fine black powder. This can be converted into anything the user desires. High grade, too. He's about to walk out with Curly's bag until he turns around. I never got your name, little miss, Dunslinger. It's Curly Brocius. Wait a minute. You're the daughter of Brocius? Ringo laughs. The great Dunslinger Brocius? <laughs> who fell from grace? The man who couldn't protect his town. Let his friends and family be killed in front of him. In the end, he was weak, just like you. 
Like father, like duck. Deja slaps Ringo across the face. His lip is bloodied. He backhands Deja. She instinctively dodges and punches Ringo out the swinging doors. He drops Curly's bag. Ringo falls back on the stairs. Men with hats whose faces can't be seen look in his direction. Well, don't just stand there. Light it up! They shoot a barrage of bullets into the saloon. Everyone in the saloon is taking cover. God damn it, Curly! I told you! They all look at each other. What should we do? Uh, escape, maybe? No, we have to stop him here and now. So these people won't be hurt or afraid anymore. Do we have to attack when they reload? They all position themselves in the saloon. Okay, D. Deja waves her hand, sigils of protection. Uh, waves her hand, and sigils of protection appear on them all. She focuses on Kai, and a sigil of wind appears on him as well. The rain of bullets stop. Go! Kai rushes through the swinging doors and kicks Ringo in the distance. Kai versus Ringo. Hey, Curly, we got this. Curly goes up to the saloon stairs and heads towards a room. She kicks it open and positions herself at the window. She pulls out her three guns and throws them in the air. At the same time, Deja is firing at the men near the bottom of the saloon. Deja, now! Deja throws a ball of light out, then it bursts, catching many of the men on fire. Curly then begins aiming at the sky. Bullet hurricane. A hailstorm of bullets rain down on Ringo's men. Curly and Deja continue to fight. Cut to exterior city street day. Kai and Ringo are alone on a street a few yards away from the saloon. You can hear the exchange of bullets. Don't you want to help your friends? They can handle themselves. Well, boy, you won't win this battle. They call me Ringo the Shadow because of how fast I can draw my gun. Dust in front of Kai appears. Ringo then puts his gun back into the holster. Bullets won't be able to touch me. But it already did. Kai notices his shoulder trying to heal from a gunshot wound, but it is happening slow. Kai grabs his shoulder, has it constantly burning where the bullet went through. You're a practitioner. Of course, and I have another. As Ringo speaks, Kai falls to his knees. Ow, I can't even see him draw. I'll, I'll let you know my power since you're about to be six feet under. But my power is heat ab absorption and distribution. That's why I wear all black. This was, this was no fun. Sorry, kid, but this one is between the eyes. Ringo fires a shot from his gun. The bullet is flying towards Kai. In those split seconds, he thought of Bia's words. It goes deeper than that. In those seconds, Kai felt connected to the ground below him, as if it was his veins in the ground. Everything else was out of the way. He could feel the energy of the bullet coming towards him. Kai stands up. I get it now. I was copying the power. I was absorbing the energy then making it look like I copied the power subconsciously. Well, I see you deflecting my bullet somehow. I didn't. And the same move won't work on me again. I see it now. Ringo doesn't even go for his gun. He fires off pressurized heat and air at Kai with his hand, using his index and middle finger. So during every shootout, you would cheat and shoot before anyone reached for their gun. Kai says as he dodges every one of Ringo's shots. Kai now is face to face with Ringo. This is for everyone you cheated. Here, let me give it all back to you. Kai reaches his hand toward Ringo. Kai flicks Ringo in the head. Energy, re energy distribution, staggering punch. Pounds of pressure hit Ringo until he goes flying back near the saloon where the ladies were fighting. Cut to interior saloon day. Curly is still shooting goons down from the top window. Deja, I'm running low on ammo. We have to think of something different. They cannot hear each other due to the spray of bullets on both sides. On energy, they keep getting back up. How is that possible? Deja then thought back on what Bia said. Meditate. I lead by example. Deja begins to meditate. 
A sigil of knowledge appears on her head. Her eyes become iridescent white. She can see all what's happening around her. She spots that one of the people outside isn't firing bullets at them, but at his allies. He senses... He senses Deja is watching and fires a bullet in her direction into the into her direction into the sky. Deja snaps back to reality. She then rushes out of the swinging doors. The firing turns towards her. She puts up a barrier and she signals Curly. I get it. There's only one move I can use. Curly jumps from the window and lands behind Deja. When I say move, duck and take down your barrier. Got it. Curly throws up all of her guns once more, but they combine into a blade of sorts. Gunblade, style Lilith. Deja instinctively lets down her barrier and hits the ground. Curly slashes the air, stopping all bullets. At the same time, Ringo comes flying in and is stopped midair as well. Ringo, my dad wasn't weak. He chose not to use the power that has cursed his family for generations. With this sword, I can use it. Curly slashes the air again, and the bullets and the 50 men disappear, only leaving Ringo. You think this is the end? No, I'm just beginning. Bia jumps down from the top of the saloon. Bia! Ringo, it's a pleasure to see you again. A shadow is forming around Ringo. No! no. G give me another chance! I can kill them all! Ringo slowly disappears into the shadow. Ringo, I'll see you in Rim. Curse you, Bia, and those! He is cut off as he disappears in the shadow. On the other side, there's a light. Curly is vanishing into the ether. I want to thank you all for helping me find my way. I do not exist in this reality. I'm lost in a way. I can't believe this is happening. I want you to take this sword and take the power residuals. The sword will be in better hands belonging to someone else. He gave it to me in another life. Bia takes the sword. I think I know who to give this to. The power residuals can be made into anything you need, so thank you all. Curly hugs Kai and Deja. It is a deep, passionate hug like they'd done this before. I love you guys. Curly says as she disappears. They both begin to cry. Cut to interior saloon day. It is the next day. Finally, everyone got some sleep. They are eating at the bar and Bia is drinking ale for breakfast. <laughs> so now you all see why I pushed you so far. Yes, there's more to this power. Same for me too. Patty comes out. Hey, we like to settle Curly's tab. Who is Curly? They won't remember, Deja. There is no point. I, I know, but... Plus, you are our heroes! Everything is free! They finish off their meal and load up on Curly's cart, and they ride to Rem. Why don't I feel like a hero? I know. Don't worry. I think you might see her again. They continue to ride to the coast city Rem. It is a solemn feeling. End of chapter 15. Who really was Curly? There is a rough road ahead. Oh, Curly. That was amazing. That was so cool. His fight scenes. Mm -hmm. I love his fight no scenes. Okay, so cool. Hi. <laughs> Western epic drinking and showdown. Falling. Love it. So accurate. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that went hard. Wait, why do they remember Curly then? Why why wouldn't they also forget? Right. It, it will all make sense in due time. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Nice. But they feel like they've known her. That's all I can say. Because that was mm -hmm. in the script. So they feel like that happened before. So. Okay. I can't wait to see this on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's the goal. Yeah. One day. You've got a full season written out already. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Damn. Like, yeah. 
Dude, I I love the choice of having you know the Western style uh, episode, and I re- I don't want to like influence anything or call anything, but if they have like a pirate style episode when they get to the coast city, <laughs> I will be so happy. <laughs> Well, maybe something like that, you know, in due time. Mm. I just want more pirate stuff for the intoxicated readers. <laughs> Why? I love pirates. Pirates are great. It's a hoot. It was a really cool piece, man. An no, excellent really addition. Cool. I love it. <laughs> Alright, guys. We're on to our last piece for the night. It is. Kai, take it away, my man. This one is a lot shorter, but um, <laughs> a lot more of a mess. I I had to rush real bad, so I had a lot more planned, but it, this is what it is now. Okay. Anyways, all right. This is called <laughs> Luvaris. Um, the cast is everyone as as themselves, and also additional. Let me pull up the cast. <laughs> um, Oscar will be Christian. Del will be Man slash TiVo slash Sarah. D, you will be playing Amy Lynn as well. And Sophie will be playing Natalie slash Woman slash Alice. Yeah. And also to yourself, yes. <laughs> uh, you're right. I'll be reading stage directions and such. Here we go. Everyone ready? Steady? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Exterior Amy Lynn's house. Pool, night. It's April 17th. The intoxicated readers have gathered in Amy Lynn's house to celebrate their one-year anniversary. Kai, Deja, Sophia, Sarah, Xavier, Nick, Christian, and their most recent member, Natalie, cluster around the long table by the tape, by the pool. <laughs> Snacking and drinking and laughing as Amy Lynn appears from the house carrying a bucket of ice. The group is already adequately intoxicated. Hey, the ice is here! <laughs> yes, Nick, it is. Give me another shot! <laughs> No, I think you've had enough. Give me another shot. No, you definitely had enough. <laughs> Give them shots. We're celebrating. Exactly. Okay, but but we don't need them both puking into the pool or anything. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm having a shot. Aren't we all doing shots? Take a shot every time someone says shot. Yeah, shot. (laughs) In their intoxicated state, the night goes by pretty amazingly until it hits midnight. Xavier's the first to try and stifle a yawn, but soon everybody's feeling the sluggish weight, though nobody knows exactly why they're suddenly feeling this exhaustion. Xavier starts stretching. Damn, I think we overdid it. (laughs) No. Just got to get another shot in. More shots. Oh, no. <laughs> we could always just chill inside, put on a movie, get cozy, drink some tea, and sober up before you guys head back. Mm. Before you guys head back. Mmm, snuggles. <laughs> I'm loving the sound of that. They head inside, getting comfortable on the couch as Amy Lynn puts on a movie on Netflix. It's a good atmosphere. And they're all enjoying the warmth. But the exhaustion is taking a toll on them. And one by one, they each fall into a slumber. Amy Lynn is the last one awake. She yawns, takes a look around, and closes her eyes. And then, blackout. Interior, arrival room, day. We open to a crisp, white room, void of anything but a singular chair. The type of chair that doctors use. Reclinable, steel, with straps on the sides. The person sitting in it is Deja. She blinks herself awake, her head groggy and her body aching. She tries to move, but everything feels like it's spinning. What is happening? Welcome, traveler. Deja's senses come back to her, and in that moment, a feeling strikes her to the very core of her being, fear. Who said that? Who's here? I am Amanda. I am an artificial intelligence designed to help travelers get adjusted to Lavars. Le Le The Varus, the seventh dimension, the home of Theos, our lord and savior, our creator. Okay. Holy shit. How do I get out of here? Simple. 
you can just walk out the door. The white wall in front of her splits open to reveal a walkway. She can't see anything on the other side, so she's reluctant to go. But she can't stay here. Okay. Okay. She slowly walks up to the door, peeks outside, and takes a step. Cut to exterior, arrival hub, welcome center, day. The welcome center is very much like an outdoor mall with several, several floors of stores and businesses packed together, agencies and restaurants all littering the building. And at the center is an elevated platform with a pool, water slides and dive boards included. Xavier looks over the railing of the fifth floor down at the pool, watching as crowds of people laugh and have fun, splashing each other without a care in the world. Except these people look different. Some of them have glowing tattoos, some with strange neon eye colors, some with extra limbs. He steps back. Whoa. And then he spots a familiar face all the way down by the edge of the pool. It's Sophie, looking pale-faced and frightened. Xavier leans forward. Sophie! Sophie looks up, and relief floods her face. She races towards the escalators, and the two meet up on the third floor. Oh my god, actually, I'm so glad to see you. Where the hell are we? What's happening? Listen, your guess is as good as mine. Last thing I remember, we were all at Amy Lynn's. We were all drunk. We went in to watch a movie and then... Did you wake up in a white room too? <laughs> Did you meet Amanda? Yes! I just left and then I came out here and... I don't know what's happening. Where the hell are we? Hey, it's okay. I don't know either. But we're gonna figure this out. And we're gonna stick together. Sophie nods and starts to calm down. You think everyone else is here too? I don't know. Then let's find out. They look around at the mass of people swarming the welcome center. There is no way they can find any of their friends in these crowds. I guess we can start over there. Xavier nods at the entrance to the arrival room, where they both came out of. As they head towards the entrance, they unknowingly pass by a person with a familiar head of blonde hair. Kai makes his way to the building to look over at the pool. He looks beyond, towards the field right next to the building. With a hesitant breath, he decides to look there. Exterior, arrival hub, field, day. Kai makes it to the field with, with its elevated hills and trees and places for people to picnic and have a grand old outdoorsy time. This area is a little less crowded, but definitely still feel, filled with people. He sees a woman that looks pretty human, aside from the neon-colored eyes, and approaches her. Hi, sorry, excuse me, um, where are we? We are in Luvaris. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got that part. The seventh dimension or something, but I don't, I don't understand. You just landed, I take it? Well, welcome to Luvaris. There's so much of the world left to explore. You're only at the arrival hub. Trust me, you're gonna have a blast. Before Kai can ask anything else, the woman whirls around and walks away. The entire exchange felt strange, almost as if the woman herself was an android. He watches her make her way to her group of friends. He shifts his gaze to the other end of the field, and then he sees it. A strange hooded figure, watching him. His heart drops. He turns around to make a break for it, and then he sees... Amy Lynn! The familiar woman turns at the mention of her name. She's shocked to see him. She breaks away from the group she was with, and the two reunite with a hug. Hey, thank God you're here. How the hell did you get here? I don't know. Sleep. We were all asleep. And then we were... I was... There was this big white room and this AI named Amanda. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. And now we're here. I've been trying to convince myself that this is all some fucked up dream, but... Who, who were you just with? Uh, they came up to me, introduced themselves, told me to join them. I just went with it because, bro, I have no idea what's going on. At this point, I'm... If we're here, the others might be too. We should start looking. Yeah, I agree. Power in numbers. Two people from Amy Lynn's group approach them. Hey. Hey. What's up, fam? Y'all okay? I see you found a friend. We're about to head to the ring. Wanna join us? Yeah, yeah dude. Skating ring. Oh, I'm TiVo, by the way. Alice. Kai, it's, uh, nice to meet you both. Kai and Amy Lynn exchange curious glances. Should they go with them? 
Yeah, sure. We'll go with you to the skating rink. We're actually uh looking for our friends, so if you could help keep a lookout, that would be great. Darling, no problem at all. We should leave now before the rink gets overcrowded. It gets pretty busy on the weekends. Tivo and Alice head back to their group. A weird feeling washes over both Amy Lynn and Kai, almost like the exchange was premeditated. Cut to exterior, arrival hub, hallway, day. Deja is walking through the hallway that leads out to the welcome center. Her senses have fully come back to her, and her body feels like it's, like it's at its peak physical form. She, stresses, she stretches a little, confused at the sensation. And then out of nowhere, she hears footsteps heading towards her. She turns, her heart rate picking up. And then, Nick appears on the other end of the corridor, running as if his life depended on it. Running beside him is Christian, who looks just as frightened. Deja, run! Nick? Christian? Run, run, run. Deja doesn't know what's going on, but she runs. The three of them race towards the entrance. What is happening? No time to explain. Basically, someone's been following us. Yeah, something is seriously wrong with this place. Deja looks behind her shoulder and sees the shadows in the darkness move like snakes. Her heart... Her heart drops. <laughs> Cut to exterior, arrival hub, field, day. Amy, Lynn, and Kai look over their shoulders before they leave with TiVo, Alice, and their group. They spot that same strange hooded figure disappearing behind a crowd of people. We woke up, met up outside our rooms, and then, fuck, I don't know. This weird shadow thing started chasing us, and I mean chasing us. We thought we were tripping, but then this guy bumped into us before we could do anything. Cut to exterior, arrival hub, welcome center, day. Xavier and Sophie bump into a group of people, all large-bodied and narrow-eyed. The group glares at them, but without saying a word, they move on. X and Sophie look at each other, and then back at the group. Something is weird here. The shadow things ate him. They grabbed him by the fucking leg and, and fucking consumed him. Come on. We still got a lot more ground to cover. Xavier turns, but then a striking pain pierces into him from behind. He screams and falls to his knees. Sophie whirls around to see what had hit him, and... <laughs> Blackout. There's so much more planned. <laughs> nice. That was return, so... return of the prompt, man. Right, 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 right. Definitely. We need more of this one. That's awesome, baby. Is this like Among Us? Oh, never mind. It felt like, I don't know. Interesting. Like Black Mirror. Like something just came. It was definitely Black Mirror inspired, I reckon. Because mm. yeah. we just watched an episode the other day, so. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. yeah you know what they understand. say where like, everyone feels like they have a memory of them as a childhood being, uh, of them as a child being lost in a mall? Mm -hmm. I feel like that tapped into everyone's fake or real memory of that. It's kind of traumatizing, Kai, not gonna lie. Oh no! <laughs> not a mall, breaking Thanks. waters. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that was good. That was really good. Thank you, thank cool. you. Yeah. That Funny. shadow sounded strangely like a small chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> Maple making a comeback. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he got a run in. I know, she said. <laughs> This is a super cool piece. What made you Thank think you. of that? Um, panic. <laughs> Not this morning. <laughs> and now, but like, to leave. You could feel that though in, in the piece, because like all the characters, you know, they were we were all like in this weird zone of like, mm -hmm. like, like let's not My try to die. Maple. <laughs> yeah. She she did she's parenting. She's parenting. Her bathroom mat. Her mat is right next to her our rug and she peed on the rug. You know better. Why did you do that? I go. Anyways. Being I parents. was saying. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. I was saying, I knew my main thing was that I wanted us to be split up in different groups as opposed to like all together. Yeah. I want us to try that. I, yeah, I I'm splitting up. That. I feel you. Thanks. Yes, That's sir. Like finding an abandoned mall. 
Oh, there's plenty of those somewhere. Mm -hmm. Urban exploring as the intoxicated readers. Hell yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm down. Do it. Just tell me when and where. Oh, really? So, like, I'm about to get cleansed. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Be honest, I could see all the parents just dropping their kids at the pool. But all right, there's a lifeguard. Don't drown. I'm going shopping. Leave me alone. <laughs> yes. yes. I have old so cash. <laughs> that just sounds like Vegas. Like parents <laughs> are like, all right, go have fun, yeah, kids. We're gonna go gamble. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. It's the at least time. that was my parents. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> oh. Well. Ooh. Yo, guys, there's an abandoned mall, like, a 33-minute drive away from here. <laughs> trying to film Don't next it. month? <laughs> Y'all. I am down. I'm saying oh, I'm you down. Get that. some battery packs, some lights. It'll be straight. Oh, guys. Nice. I had this idea when we were filming Sophie's short film. But I think it'd be a cool hey, idea. Hey, I'm going to hey. write it. Hmm? No, I'm not going to say anything about yours. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to write it. It's a, um idea of, like, the movie is we're filming a short film, oh. but then it gets creepy and things start happening. Horror as we're ensues. It. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think nice. it'd be cool for all of us to be in it. Mm -hmm. I'll write it one day, but yeah. <laughs> Bloomhouse. Pitch it to Bloomhouse. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's all in there. Have you ever seen or read Six Characters in Search of an Author? By Pirandello. I don't know. I think they did it at AMDA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. Really? In yeah. Oh, they did it in high school. As a black box show. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, Interesting. It's a creepy one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Are there like a lot of creepy plays out there? Like they're not. Uh, a few <laughs> of Agatha Christie's pieces have been turned into plays. Like um, and then there were none. Has a play version. Nice. They should make Edgar Edgar Allan Poe's poems into plays. Oh, uh, for like a Damn. one act, that'd be cool. Mm. That'd be creepy. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> Look at us. It's our one year stream. Yeah, that was our one year <laughs> fucking stream, dudes. That's crazy. Damn. Let's. That was our one year stream. One year streaming, bro. <laughs> Let's go around and extraduce ourselves. And I want you to extraduce yourself with anything you want from our past year of streams. <laughs> the yeah. possibilities are endless. That's too much freedom. Okay, then just just do tonight yeah. if it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I've, I'm Kai Tam, and I have been drinking copious amounts of bourbon and gaining powers from it. I love it. I am Deja, and I have been trying to chain train the giant maple <laughs> to pee on her pad. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm Nick, and I have been just fucking running. <laughs> um, I am Delvin, and... I can, I've been muting this whole stream. <laughs> yes. Uh, I am Oscar, and I've been the great pretender, Amy Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm Sophie, and I've been a lopsided helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Xavier, and I have been one year Caliban. Hey. And together, for one whole year now, we are the Intoxicated Reader. Yes. Thank you so much, Oscar and Delvin, for being here on this wonderful show and such last-minute notice. It was fantastic. Yes. What? What do you? <laughs> he's re he's reading. Okay. Very awkwardly <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, everybody in the audience, thank you so much for a year of support. 
I don't think we announced this last week because it happened right afterwards. Or maybe we did. I don't know. But we are up to 50 followers. That means we qualify for the Twitch affiliate program, guys. So, pretty soon, we're going to get shit like, you know, badges. And eventually, our own, uh, like, uh, what are they called? Emojis. Emo emotes. Yeah, emotes. Oh, that means really? Yeah, in the Twitch chat. Nice. Um, that's a that's a bit down the road though, <laughs> but it's on its way. Uh, that's super exciting. We also have some merch that we just dropped. There are two different designs you can get on shirts and hoodies. I'm wearing one of them, drawn by Kai Tam. This was originated from one of our gaming streams a few months back, and we decided to bring it back. You can check that out on our Teespring shop, Intoxicated Readers Shop. You can find the links on our. Uh, Twitter and Instagram, I think. I don't know. Well, something. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, down below, you can find the links to our Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and YouTube. Guys, I've been on the Reddit. I've been trying to get us some karma so we can get a subreddit going. It's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's a process. Follow us. Join us on Discord. Come game with us. Come stream. Come create art with us. Our film festival is going on right now, guys. There's so much happening. Go, go fast. Yeah. Uh, the submissions are just about to open up for the film festival, but you have until April 30th to get a film in with the requirements that are listed on the Twitter and Instagram. You can check those out. We have been just advertising the fuck out of them. And we have a show for the festival coming up the first week of May. There'll be more information on that soon. I think like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Happy one year, everybody. Happy, Happy one, one year. year. One year. Oh, yeah. Here's one to year. another. Yeah. Cheers. Can't wait till we have our 50 year anniversary. <laughs> oh, 50th year, bro. Damn. All right, y'all. I'll be here for it. Yes. <laughs> Have a wonderful Saturday night, and we'll see you Monday night for game stream. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Woo. See you all next year. <laughs>